Hello, my name is Frank Everett, and welcome to Frank's Files. When we find jewels that have a history and a story and a provenance, we get so excited, we have to hit the books and really get to the bottom of the story. I have some amazing pieces here that are coming up in our April sale, and I can't wait to tell you about them. The first piece we're gonna talk about is the cover lot, the magnificent and legendary Stotesbury Emerald. Hexagon shaped, over 34 carats of classic Colombian origin. The first owner was Evelyn Walsh McLean, also the owner of the Hope Diamond. Evelyn Walsh McLean had this emerald set in a necklace by Cartier. There was a beautiful pearl, suspended this emerald, and then a 94 carat pear-shaped diamond called the Star of the East. I think after about two years, Evelyn Walsh McLean got tired of that jewel. So she sent the emerald and the pearl back to Cartier, and they traded her the Hope Diamond. Now, Cartier has this emerald. The next owner is Ava Stotesbury, Philadelphia and Palm Beach socialite and party giver extraordinaire. Eventually, after her death, it was sold privately to Harry Winston. He mounts it in a ring and he sells it to the third owner, May Bofi Stanton, Denver heiress. May Bofi Stanton enjoyed this in a ring for the rest of her life and eventually the ring turned up at auction in 1971 and it hasn't been seen since. So we are thrilled to feature it on the cover and to offer it in our April sale. Now, we're gonna go from Harry Winston back to Cartier. Beautiful platinum and diamond brooch featuring two sapphires, one seven carats, the other about 10. But why is this important? The woman who owned this, Mrs. John Ravensky, was very early on in her life Mrs. Morton Plant. Why is that important? Because Mr. Plant bought a corner lot on Fifth Avenue in 1902 for one million dollars. A few years later, the neighborhood started to get a little commercial and all the fashionable people in New York were moving uptown and he wasn't so sure he wanted to stay living in his mansion. So one day his wife was walking by Cartier and she saw a beautiful double strand of pearls that she admired and told him that she wanted. The price of the pearls was a million dollars and he orchestrated a deal where he traded the mansion for the pearls. That mansion is still the Cartier mansion today and is relatively untouched from the way it was built for him in 1902. So pretty fabulous story. Next, we move on to Tiffany & Company. So here I have a beautiful group of jewels designed by Louis Comfort Tiffany. He really created jewelry that I believe is as much art as any fabulous painting. So I just wanna show you a couple of these pieces. This one, I think is superb. It utilizes one of his favorite stones, which was the black opal. But what I love about this brooch the most is the back. Another brooch. Beautiful carved jade, also surrounded by sapphires, and he loved to use American stones. These are Montana sapphires. They're a very specific, very light color, and you always associate them with Louis Comfort Tiffany. And then my favorite piece of all, I think, from this collection is this beautiful necklace, a citrine surrounded by pearls, but what's really important about this is the enamel work. Finally, we have some jewels from Van Cleef and Arpels from what I consider to be the golden moment of Van Cleef. This might be my favorite thing in the entire sale. Beautiful necklace about 1970. This breaks apart into two bracelets. You can have a long necklace with or without the pendant. This can be worn as a brooch and you can wear a short necklace. So you get about five pieces out of one jewel. And finally, this spectacular necklace, this emerald comes off and you can wear it on this cuff bracelet. So again, the convertibility, fabulous. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing these jewels as much as I've enjoyed showing them to you. These are truly examples of what makes buying at Sotheby's so special. You're not just getting a beautiful jewel, you're getting a story, history, and provenance.